Hello. Uh, my name is Steven Van Camp and Lewis, and today, the day that I'm filming is April 30th, but I'm publishing this video on May 8th. Uh, and I'm doing that because I happen to have the time, uh, I took a little time off of work at the end of today, which is a Friday, um, and just decided to film this video, uh, which is another care collab video, and then I'll post it uh, on April 8th excuse me, May 8th. And today's discussion will actually be about Cattleya seedlings. So uh, Nina, of course, over at Ninja Orchids, um, had someone ask about caring for Cattleya seedlings and, and decided to, to uh, uh, arrange another Care Collab video. That said, I, I haven't seen the current list of Care Collab uh, participants, uh, so I can't tell you about them, but I can post them right here in the video. Um, of course, I'm doing it. Uh, Nina over at Ninja Orchids is likely doing it. And then all these other folks uh, as well uh, are participating. So, so check out their channels uh, to, to get an idea of how they, they take care of their Cattleya seedlings. Uh, also, uh, an interesting, hopefully an interesting source for whomever is watching this to learn about care of Cattleya seedlings, uh, William Green and I had a really good discussion, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so, about how we care for our Cattleya seedlings, and I have included that link in the the discussion, um, or excuse me, in the description of this video as well. So you can check that out. That's about 20 minutes. Um, 20 minutes is a little longer than I prefer to make a video about, but uh, there's a lot of really good stuff there, at least I think. Um, and, and 20 minutes to learn how to care for your Cattleya seedlings, which can take five to 10 years to bloom from when you purchase them as little seedlings here, um, really isn't that long of a video when you consider um, that really it should help you figure out how to grow these guys a little better. In addition to the video that I'm making it right now, and in addition to the other Care Collab folks who are, are participating also, as part of this Care Collab video, I really want to, I want to do an update on these little Cattleya hardiana seedlings that I deflasked uh, on May 21st, 2020. Um, if you recall, and I've made several videos since then, this was sort of an emergency deflask. I got the, the flask in the mail uh, and, and they weren't even seedlings. They were, they were like protocorms, little tiny green things, no roots uh, on top of the agar media, and they probably shouldn't have been sold to me. When I got them, I had the flask for about, I don't know, two or three weeks, and, and it, it got mold. And that mold will smother anything in that agar, uh, or in that flask on top of that agar, and will kill it all. So I, I bit the bullet and said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna create I'm gonna do something crazy, and I'm gonna see if I can create a system where these little these little um, protocorms uh, will will live, will will turn into seedlings, which of course is the topic of this video, um, and then ultimately as adults. And it, it's worked, and it, <laughs> I surprised myself. Um, so my update will show you right now that these little Hardiana seedlings are doing really well. So nothing has really changed. Um, and I'm gonna include links to the previous videos uh, that I made about these guys, sort of documenting their process in the, the video description. But uh, essentially what I did is I took, I took them out of flask and I cleaned them off. I got all the agar off. And then I created this container which you see here has is just a clear container and there's a hole there's a couple of holes right there so I can fill the water up uh, in, in into this container and it can sit there and it's kind of similar to my my current PET method where on the bottom I've got this this EpiWeb or EcoWeb which is you know it's basically it's just supposed to be an inorganic media uh, that doesn't rot while sitting in water and then on top of that, I have this cypress mulch. They got for real cheap at Home Depot. 
Uh, I've learned that this particular cypress mulch is sort of cut with uh, other species of wood, so it's not a real high quality mulch. If it was if it was 100% pure cypress mulch, it would be much higher quality. But it's good for catacetums, and I find it pretty good for my, my Cattleya seedlings. Um, since the wood does last for a couple years, and, and that's all you really need for Cattleya seedlings if it's growing well. So, uh, I took those protocorms, I threw them on top of this mixture that I created, and they've, they've turned out really well. Um, you can see the roots are growing on those guys, and they are turning into little seedlings that will be viable for, for transplanting. I don't know, I would say in a year from now, I'll probably put them into a community pot or into their own um, pots. And you can see they're super healthy. You can see the nice red coloration on the leaves there. Um, so these, these are happy plants and they're doing well. And, and I'm really excited to share this, this sort of update for y'all. And I've been growing this one under lights, uh, under an LED light in my house. And I, I change it, um, I change the light every month. I either increase it or decrease it. So what'll end up happening is the day length will be 16 hours long in at the peak of summer and then by the time winter rolls around the the day length is is down to to 10 hours per day um i am sprinkling some of that purely organic fertilizer on top kind of whenever i remember so maybe every three or four months and i water it when it appears dry uh, right now it's it's pretty damp looking so I don't need to water it and you can see on the bottom there's a little bit of water rolling around so I probably won't need to water this probably not more than once a week I would imagine and and my next step for these guys is to bring them outside so you can see that I've, I've started bringing I've brought actually most of my orchid collection outside already what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna burn holes in the bottom of this and then I'm going to just treat it as a regular pot. And I should hit this with water every other, uh, every other day when temperatures are, really, are fairly warm, probably starting about a month from now, and then every day during the, the hottest part of the year. And then back off, of course, as, as temperatures cool down. But uh, I anticipate that the, the top of this will probably fill up with leaves by the time I repot this. Like I said, in about a year is, is my guess. So, I mean, that's how I'm caring for these guys. Uh, it's light, fertilizer, water. Temperature um, has been inside my house. So, you know, we have general temperatures from, let's say in the, the winter, a normal winter day might get down to 68 in the house and then a normal summer day. I usually let the, the temperatures when nobody's there, when everybody's at work, uh, go up to 80 before the air conditioning kicks on at around 4 p.m. So th those are that's the general range that I, I have found to be good for uh, these Cattleya seedlings. Now these guys were kind of a special case. I think what happens when when most people think about Cattleya seedlings is, is they're looking at something like this, you know. They're gonna buy a two inch pot from a vendor of some sort, right, a show or an open house or maybe even online. And, and they're gonna wonder, hey, what do I do now? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna transition from this, this special case to, to sort of my normal care for these guys. So the first thing that I like to do is, is when I bring them home, uh, I'm going to repot them into a fine grade Orchiata mix. You can see how small these, these bark particles are. Uh, there is typically, in addition to the bark, there's also some, some perlite. Kind of blanked on that for a second there. but So uh, uh, probably maybe a 50-50 blend of perlite and Orchiata bark, or sometimes even just Orchiata bark in a clay pot, as you can see. And that really lets me water these in the same way that I water my adults, 
which of course is here. Again, same, same regimen uh, that I described for this one for water is that it will, it will get watered every day during the heat of summer and then it will be watered every other day, you know, sort of on, on either side of summer on the, the intermediate side of things and then once temperatures cool off I will water once a week. I really like to make sure that my entire collection gets watered the same way um, so I'm not making special cases for my plants as I'm watering them and, and I, I find that to be really helpful in uh, you know orchid care efficiency and therefore fun right if it becomes a chore it's not as much fun I honestly don't know how people carry, you know, have a collection of 100 plants and they'll carry their pots over to a sink and back multiple times per week. That that would drive me nuts. So uh, I really appreciate and enjoy uh, being efficient with how I water. Uh, light for Catlay seedlings will be the same as for adults, and that's basically bright. You know, if you are growing your Catlaya adults well, then your seedlings will appreciate the same level of light, uh, the same amount of fertilizer. So I've got these little baskets that I fill with a powder called Purely Organic. And uh, as soon as it gets wet for the first time, it kind of hardens into this, this sort of rock that slowly dissolves over the course of like three to six months. And that's, that's all, that's mostly what I'll do for fertilizing. For, I'll also do, um, once a month, I'll hit it with Kelp Max if you don't have kelp max in your area you know well if you don't have kelp max you can buy it from first rays orchids ray barkalo is a very smart guy and has really great um orchid fertilizers and um <clears throat> and if you're in europe or australia or wherever you don't have access to that it's it's basically it's just a kelp fertilizer it's a high quality kelp fertilizer and you can get those pretty much around the world uh, again that hitting these guys and all my plants really uh, once a month will uh, uh, really benefit especially the roots creating a, a good strong root system so that that's water that's fertilizer that I covered light um, you, you want to water at, when they're approaching wetness, excuse me, when they're approaching dryness, not wetness. Uh, again, it, it's really the same as for your adults. And I think what makes growing seedlings tricky is that not the general care, because the general care, as I've said several times over, is really similar to your adults. The difference is that things can go wrong really quickly. A small plant, um, it doesn't have the nutrient reserves, doesn't have the bulbs for, for drought, for extended dryness. Um, it doesn't have enough leaves so that if it gets burnt, let's say this big leaf gets burnt off by accident or, or cut off for some reason, it doesn't have the same, the same leaf reserves that a larger plant can have and so losing a big leaf like this can be a big setback for a small plant like this uh, conversely they're not in addition to not being drought tolerant you know you don't want to ruin their roots by keeping things wet if you ruin the roots on a little guy like this it's toast right whereas a larger plant like this if you ruin some of the roots if you ruin all the roots it, it's it's probably going to be toast but you have more of a chance of bringing it back to life because there's energy in the bulbs. These guys don't have the energy in the bulbs. So I think I think that's really what happens when people say, oh man, I, I can't grow seedlings, is that these these random events or, or unforeseen cultural problems um, will take out a seedling just really quickly because again, it doesn't have the, the energy reserves and the bulbs to sort of get it through this difficult period. Or even, you know, mealybugs. You know, I have mealybugs. Uh, oh, all of these, by the way, are Cattleya purpurata. But, you know, I have mealybugs. I grew outside, right? So you can see dots there, and those are mealybugs. I don't care. They don't really do anything to a plant this big. Unless it becomes a big infestation, I just let it go. 
um, and typically by the warm months the the mealy bug and scale predators have just obliterated them and I don't see them at all but a mealy bug infestation on a guy like this it can really knock it back or even kill it outright so again it, you have to be vigilant and you, you have to really focus on not letting the random events kill a plant and by random event let's say uh, you you your plant gets burned and it's it's in trouble or cultural conditions maybe you're gone for a, a week or two and that causes a drought and suddenly you know your plant is dead because it doesn't have enough water so of course the goal is for each subsequent growth to be larger than the last and you can see on this one that's happening right old growth a little newer newest growth and this is somewhere in between so these two are about the same but this is the this is the growth that i can claim was under my care and that that that's doing really well so again uh, this is cattleya purpurata this is an unbloomed Cattleya purpurata, but is near blooming size. You can see it's got sheaths here. So this is the goal, right? You um, you get this guy to go to this guy to a near blooming size plant. And this is actually one of the um, imports that I got probably a year or two ago. And I suspect the fact that I have three sheaths on this one means I'm expecting blooms in a month or two. And in fact. I might even have a little bit of swelling at the base of these these green sheaths. So I'm pretty confident that this particular Lelia purpurata will bloom. And once you get it past the near blooming size, then you have the mature plant size, which blooms regularly. Um, again, you want each growth, growth to get bigger. And you can see that this one has been steadily getting larger and larger until, you know, the newest growth is this one right here. You can see how big that bulb is. That's your, that's your goal right there. And then, of course, the newest growth should be um, on track to be as large as or larger. And here's another very large bulb here. Sorry, this plant is heavy. And of course this, this guy used to be this size, right? And this guy used to be this size and even smaller. So again, the goal is, is larger and larger growths on each subsequent growth. And ideally um, you get a, a plant like this one that will bloom every year or even multiple, year, uh, multiple times per year. So. Uh, if you have any questions about Cattleya seedling care, uh, let me know in the comments and I will get back to you. If this is helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you next weekend. Bye.